Dear learners, welcome to EPG Parshala. I am Dr. Prashant Gautam from University Institute of Hotel and Tourism Management, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Today, we are going to study module title, label, type, and process of planning under the paper Tourism Planning and Sustainable Development. Dear learners, the learning objectives of this module are to know about the significance of planning, to understand the various level of planning in tourism, to understand about types of tourism planning. Planning and policy development analytically evaluates the main arguments about the outcomes of tourism in less developed civilizations. One does not have to look at information to see that the effects of tourism have been vast in the world we live in. Tourism is one of the quickest growing industries of the world. According to World Tourism Organization, revised estimates, total international tourist arrival worldwide came to almost 1184 million in 2015. Some 50 million more tourists Overnight visitor traveled to international destination around the world in 2015 as compared to 2014. International tourism receipts for 1996 are estimated to be just 425 billion. An article in the Hutchison Educational Encyclopedia 1999 has pointed out tourism is the world's largest industry. It was so bad. It sustained 120 million jobs in 1995, accounting for 7% of the global workforce. These are the some old figures. As the figure displays, tourism has a major effect on the world economy. One has to realize that along with benefits, tourism does also bring many harmful effects on both the developing as well as on the developed countries. Planning involves methods and materials hand in hand with making decisions regarding the future. Planning helps in attaining the objectives through rational thinking and using the resources in an efficient and effective way in order to maximize output, income and employment. It ensures balanced growth of tourism sector which is unidirectional, focused and to achieve the desired goal. In tourism, planning is very important and brings a lots of benefits. Through, in the developed countries, the importance of this sector was realized soon, but lately recognized in the developing countries. This sector was greatly recognized post Second World War. In 1960s, UNO also recognized the importance of tourism and the need of planning in it. The UNO in 1963 organized the International Conference on International Travel and Tourism held in Rome and recognized the importance of planning in the tourism sector and ended up with subsequent suggestions. The developing countries should give high importance to growth of tourism. United Nations is ready to give full support in form of regional and sub-regional surveys to support this activity. Nations should carry out surveys of their resources and of the potential visitors and carry out thorough studies on tourist traffic estimates and forecasts. The development of tourism should have both short-term and long-term objectives. In order to achieve the short-term and long-term objectives, the country should establish nodal agencies to set up national tourism organizations known as NTOs. The planning function of tourism was recognized by International Union of Official Tourism Organization IUOTO in 1964 and also recognized by United Nations Conference of Travel and Development, UNCTAD, in 1965. 
Careful planning is a prerequisite for the successful development of tourism. Though the nature and pattern of planning varies in developed and developing countries. For example, in a developing country, the resources are scarce, while in case of developed countries, there is no depth of resources. Hence, then the development of tourism has to be done accordingly. But emphasis on the conservation of ecology and natural resources is very important. Whatever planning is there, the variable of the region, destination, such as attributes of the region, its relative location on the map, perception of the tourist and the local community, government decisions, role of various stakeholders, nature of tourism product, for example, goods and services have to be considered. Sustainability has an important role in tourism planning, both at micro and macro level. If we talk about the macro level, dispersion policy, for example, a policy of dispersing tourist resorts across a region to distribute resorts and tourists so that financial benefits are got by everyone. Zoning Zoning of land areas in a destination to segregate the activities and preserve the habitat. Encouragement of green policies, for example, rainwater harvesting, use of solar energy. Creation of urban tourist facilities and improvement of basic infrastructure. Creating environmental awareness. And at micro level, restrictive entry, barriers across entrance points, quotas for visitors during the year, use of price mechanism to control the traffic, site management, signposting, protecting footpaths, the location and size of tourism facilities like hotels, car parking, roads, etc. Process of tourism planning. Tourism planning is applied at different levels from the general level which may apply to an entire country or region down to the local level which may apply to detailed planning for specific resort. What is important to focus is the tourism planning and development must be balanced between all levels to take into account different levels of concern and to avoid copying of efforts and policies. Each level involves different considerations as follows. At international level, tourism planning at international level consists of one or more than one country and also includes the areas like tourism infrastructures, like transportation, promotion and marketing, local level tourism policies. And at national level, tourism planning at national level is focused more towards the national tourism policy, infrastructure within the country, major destinations, facilities and services inside that country, level of education and training and promotion and marketing programs. And at regional level, tourism planning at regional level is focused towards the development of tourism at local level. Usually it is done by provinces, states. It includes infrastructure, regional transportation accessibility. At local or community level, tourism planning at local level includes town, villages, resorts or rural areas. Here the planning is more focused towards on tourism areas plan, use of land for resorts and tourism facilities and attractions. At site planning level, site planning level planning refers to specific area or a location of a structure or building, preservation, 
landscape area and other facilities done for particular growth of sites such as resorts or a design of a building. As stated above, levels of planning are diverse and may involve individuals, companies, industry and country as a whole, micro or macro aspect. Generally, two economic systems occur in the world and the countries may adopt any one of them depending on their framework. These two systems are planned economy or market economy. The former type of planning involves to compulsory planning and the latter type of planning may be indicative planning. The process of tourism plans for national, regional or local level is based on sustainable, amalgamated and implementable way. The key step in planning of tourism are study preparation, determination of various objectives, survey of all elements, analysis and synthesis of this survey information, policy and plan formulation, financial planning, human resource planning, implementation techniques, administrative structures, monitoring progress, time factor, marketing and promotion, etc. It has now been recognized that tourism should be managed and developed in a controlled, integrated and sustainable manner based on sound and perfect planning. This can bring great dividends to the region, not limited to economic but social, cultural and ecological aspects and prevent uncontrolled developments. Tourism planning is done at all level, for example, international level, national level, regional level and specific areas or sites level. But the regional planning scale is most important and generally adopted throughout the world. It is defined as a destination zone usually controlled by the government agency and centers on regional planning of attractions, facilities and services for the tourist. Now, proficient and skilled experts play an important role in making the master plan, finalizing key aspects. Though the main plan is outside their jurisdiction, the long-term planning approach in regional level is important for the success of the tourism plan as it helps in identifying the key problems associated with economy, society, culture and ecology of a particular region. It also brings more support from the local population, but in practical situations, tourism is a complex activity involving a lot of actors and organizations playing their respective roles. So, for involving all the actors and organizations in a constructive way, planning of tourism is very important. So that the common agreed accepted agenda for all stakeholders can be moved ahead and the complicated and unresolved issue of conflict could be kept for any solution in the near future. Tourism for some reasons may be a new activity. There the help can be taken from the experience of the other established tourism reasons if the factors and environment of both the reasons match. For nations that do not yet match, travel planning can deliver the essential supervision for its growth. For those areas that already have some tourism, planning is frequently required to rejuvenate this particular sector and maintain its future feasibility. So, whenever we are planning for tourism, firstly, tourism can be planned for national and regional level. At these levels of planning, the elite or standard tourism policies, structures, plans, facility standards and institutional factors and other factors be developed for developing and managing tourism. Then within that skeleton frame, national and regional planning more comprehensive plans 
be done to enhance tourist attractions like resorts, urban, rural and other forms of tourism. There are various approaches involved in regional tourism planning and are as follows. Planning tourism as an integrated system. This approach is also known as planning function of demand and supply. It means that tourism must be seen as an interrelated or connected coordination of demand and supply. The demand issue are tourist markets, domestic as well as international. Local residents who use tourist infrastructure and supply factors which consist of attraction, tourist activities, accommodation and other tourist facilities and services. The successful development, job and supervision of regional tourism needs surely institutional elements. These elements include organization structures, tourism related legislations and regulations, education and proper training programs, financial capital, marketing and promotional strategies and travel facilitations of immigration. An interrelated system approach or a comprehensive approach involves considerations and combined development of all the segments of the tourism system which includes the demand factors, supply factors, institutional factors for complete development of the system as an integrated unit. Planning for sustainable development. This approach focuses on tourism planning that promote efficient utilization and preservation of resources for future generations. This includes natural, cultural and other resources. The sustainable development approach considers the carrying of place, conservation of resources and life supporting systems, maintaining quality of environment, conserving our culture and traditions and promoting tourism in a symbiotic way. Long range and strategic planning. This type of planning involves specific goals and objectives with long term period involved in it. The tourism policies developed are implemented to get desired result in a duration ranging from 10 to 20 years. This approach is generally employed in case of national parks or resorts which require a long time for development. Public planning. In this approach, generally government agencies or government are involved. Here the emphasis is on developing tourism for everyone which benefits everyone. Here emphasis is on involving local natives, the development and planning process. The role of government, the private agencies and the local people is streamlined so that to realize the goal of tourism. This type of arrangement is generally followed in developing countries where resources are scarce and the tourism activities are new. The tourism planning is important but there are numerous examples in the history which show that planning existed as well as marked functions in the traditional societies. Here below, rice terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras in a remarkable example of the planning of our ancestors. But in the present context, it needs protection, preservation and planning to further facilitate its protection and preservation. Tourism planning and development is the essential elements in the managing various tourist destinations. But at the same instances, these aspects can be learned from examples set by our ancestors, who were much more wise, capable and scientific in their approach. 
for them individuals goals were important but at the same time emphasis was also given for the community and the for natures rice terraces of philippines cordilleras are one of the finest examples to understand the fruit of knowledge which was passed on from one generation to another the sacred traditions customs social aspects along the beauty of nature are some of the fascinations of this reason the destination expresses the harmony between mankind and the environment also the destinations comes in the unesco world heritage sites list this sites is a phenomenal example of a progressed living cultural landscape whose history is 2 millennia old from the pre-colonial days it is located in luzon in the northern island of philippines and consists of historic most intact and beautiful terraces covering a large area comprising of five clusters in four municipalities the area is heavily inhabited by ifugo a minority commune that has engaged these mountains for engaged ages the five engraved clusters are nagakandan terrace cluster kiangan municipality hungduan terrace moyoyo terrace bangan terrace and batat terrace these terraces exemplify the unique amalgamation of physical socio cultural economic social and political environment they are in fact one of the beautiful manifestations of almighty and a gift which has been passed on from philippine ancestors to the human race it is an unparalleled example that has exceeded a number of challenges and setbacks posed by modernization these terraces have been built at steeper slopes than other terraces and whose poles have been carved from the natural shapes of hill to make stepped pond fields collective with difficult irrigation systems harvesting waters from the buds of the mountain tops at high structured farming system revealing the mastery of engineering that is counted to the present day the archaeological proof exposes that the method has been used in the region for 2000 years and put forward lessons that can be used for analogous environments somewhere else in the world the existence of terraces till date also exhibit cooperative method of the complete community which is created on detailed information of the rich variety of biological resources present in the i figure agro ecosystem the safeguarding of the living rice terraces mirrors a primarily cooperative method of the whole community which is created on detailed knowledge of the rich diversity of biological resources current in the i figure agro ecosystem a superbly tuned yearly systems valuing lunar cycle zoning and planning wide soil conservation mastery of a maximum complex pest control regime created on the process of a mixture of herbs accompanied by religious rituals the rice terraces are incredibly demo to a community sustainable and principally common systems of rice production based on harvesting water from the forest covered mountain tops and generating stone terraces and ponds a system that has lasted for more than 2 millennia taro was the primary crop when they began to be used for agriculture later to be substituted by rice which is the main crop today the rice terraces are cenotaphs to the history and labor of more than a thousand generations of small scale farmers who working together as a community have created a landscape 
based on a delicate and sustainable use of natural resources. These terraces present a perfect example of land use that have occurred due to melodious interface among populace and its surroundings, which has resulted in pictures beauty, but now susceptible to societal and profitable changes. The important attributes of the rice terraces include the traditional hamlets along with the forests, the traditionally defined boundaries for terraces with the buffer zone of clandestine forest have given some level of protection and definition of precise limits of the protected areas and the preparation and implementation of community-based land use and zoning plans CBLU JP. Critical to ensure that the conditions of integrity are maintained. Along with the tribal culture, Christianity coexists since the 1950s through presently the technologically and evolutionary changes have greatly affected the social equilibrium that existed for the past two millennia. Apart from the anthropological developments such as rural and urban migration, the natural happenings such as massive earthquakes have also changed the locations of the water resources, terrace dams and water distribution system. All these factors pose noteworthy disputes that could be handled through the sustained execution of maintenance and management actions. The Ifugo community has retained the authentic resign since ages and maintained a balance by following the sound principles of climate, nature, geography, geology, agronomy, ethnography, religion, society, economy, polity and other aspects laid, laid down by their ancestors. Though the various changes of evolution, environment and community are continuously posing challenges to the terraces. However, a Fugao community persists to occupy, use and maintain their inherited lands in the age-old traditional manner ensuring admiration and responsiveness of the enduring value of these conventional practices which prolong to sustain them. These terraces were declared national terraces and presidential decrees 263, 1973 and 1505-1978. The terraces have been long protected and managed through customary ancestral land use management traditions of the aboriginal Ifugao community. Individual terraces are privately owned and protected through ancestral rights, tribal laws and traditional practices. At present, the rice terraces are under the management of the provincial government of Ifugao and the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. A rice terraces master plan comprehensively cover management, conservation and socio-economic issues. Threats and concerns identified when the property was put in the list of world heritage in danger in 2001 are now being conscientiously and systematically addressed through efforts extended by the provincial government and the concerned national agencies. This will ensure completion of the corrective measures that constitute removal of the property from the list of world heritage in danger. Programs have been established to ensure landscape restoration and conservation through the documentation and continuous physical rehabilitation of deteriorated areas, including the revival of traditional practices that as addresses cultural degeneration, pride of place and culture, including the long-term 
commitment of its indigenous gao stakeholders shall ensure the sustainability and conservation of this living cultural landscape over time the terraces are the only form of stone construction from the pre colonial period the philippines alone among southeast asian culture is a wholly wood based one unlike cambodia indonesia or thailand in the philippine both domestic buildings and ritual structures such as temples and shrines were built from the wood a tradition that has survived in the terrace hamlets the principal difference between the philippines terraces and those elsewhere are their higher altitude and the steeper slopes and the high altitude cultivation is based on the use of a special strain of rice which germinates under freezing conditions and grows chest height with non shattering panicles to felicitate harvesting on slopes that are too steep to permit the use of animals or machinery of any kind types of tourism planning there are number of types of tourism planning some important ones are as follows special tourism planning the area as well as the environment is examined for the creating good quality infrastructure for example jim corbett national park sectorial tourism planning sections to be developed is divided into different broad sections called zones for example southeast asia integrated tourism planning portions of a tourist region are integrated so that the region become a top destination complex tourism planning when numerous reasons are considered for planning which are far away for example char dham yatra centralized tourism planning particular authority usually state or central government no private sector intervenes decentralized tourism planning parties who are extreme to develop the spot government do not hinder but it offers financial support for example netubeshri airport urban and rural tourism planning urban contemporary infrastructure rural art music and literature history built from the scratch in tourism planning is of key importance the key aim of this planning is to attain at a equalized growth of demand and supply it helps in best possible synchronization and coordination between the two extremities of the tourism market and preventing the making of serious economic protective or social differences therefore the very starting point of planning in the tourism sector is to see it as a global activity and to bring benefits to the particular country and the region as a whole now there may be a number of planning types of in tourism the focus should be on integrated development through amalgamated planning combined planning is a joint planning exercise that guarantees the involvement of all types of the players of tourism for example the stakeholders and affected departments the purpose is to analyze all financial community and ecological costs and benefits in order to define the most suitable choice and to plan a appropriate course of action the planning of tourism whether at the national or regional level must be considered as an primary and therefore coordinated parts of the countries general economic and social planning this coordinated method has a direct bearing on the success of tourism industry more so in developing countries it is also to be remembered that tourism is not one business but includes many industries and a whole series of complex processes 
a plan for tourism can only last and serve its stated purposes if there is coordination among all the processes. A first prerequisite is the requirement to confirm that the government organs precisely responsible for the tourist sector play their significant role, which is that of cooperating with all those governmental departments reliable for other branches concerned with the growth of tourism. The tourism planning is vital as it helps to set a universal vision for the country or the reason course and assurance for tourism development. It helps in streamlining the various impacts of the development and resource limitations or in other words we can say that it helps in conducting the feasibility study of the tourism market. Further, it helps in an area or region or nation by giving a firmness and certainty in the progress of the complete development of tourism in a given reason destination. Tourism planning process is an important step at any level, regional or the national level. It may be regarded as an integral process and involves a coordinated approach. As we know that tourism is a complex activity and involves coordination of many sectors. So a plan of tourism can only work if there is a coordination among all processes. Also, the source of planning in the tourism sector should be seen in global perspective and associated with countries. Economic and social growth and with the complete policy of planning for a reason where tourism holds good potential and importance. The main aspects in tourism planning are assessment of tourist demand and supply, establishing objectives, territorial planning, basic infrastructure, financial planning, human resource planning, administrative structure, marketing and promotion, monitoring and progress and time factor. Also, according to WTO, there are two approaches to responsible planning for sustainable development, a top-down approach where tourism plan are made by a central authority and bottom-up approach where plans are driven by the local community. Tourism growth has together affirmative and pessimistic effect on a tourist area. Locals are also vulnerable to useless and unplanned developments. And in order to overcome it, complete planning is necessary to maximize benefits and minimize the costs or negative impacts of tourism developments. And also that for effective implementation of tourism plan, it is not significant to only form a plan but also to apply it without any errors. Planners and governments along with tourism planning and development should understand the environment of that particular place and plan so as to improve the environment. The inspiration of the participation and the active involvement of the host community in the planning process are of crucial significance for keeping the control of the tourism industry in the hands of the local community and attaining a stable tourism development. Dear learners, to summarize the module, we can say in tourism planning is very important and brings a lot of benefits. Though in the developed countries, the importance of this sector was realized soon but lately it recognized in the developing countries. Planning involves methods and materials hand in hand with making decisions regarding the future. The 1960s UNO also recognized the importance of tourism and the need of planning in it. The planning function of tourism was recognized by International Union of Official Tourism Organization in 1964 
and also recognized by United Nations Conference of Travel and Tourism Development, properly known as UNCTAD in 1965. Whatever planning is there, the variable of the region or destination, such as attributes of the region, its relative locations on the map, perception of the tourists and local community, government decisions, role of stakeholders, nature of tourism product, for example goods and services, have to be considered. Tourism planning is implemented at various levels from the general level which may apply to an whole country or reason down to the local level which may apply to detailed planning for specific resort. The key steps in planning of tourism are study preparation, determination of objectives, survey of all elements, analysis and synthesis of the survey, information, policy and plan formulation, financial planning, human resource planning, implementation techniques, administrative structures, monitoring process, time factor, marketing and promotion, etc. So, whenever we are planning for tourism, firstly, tourism be planned for national and regional level and then followed by detailed planning. The various regional level planning approaches are integrated approach interrelated approach, sustainable approach or public approach. There are also many types of tourism planning. The focus should be on integrated development through integrated planning, which is a joint planning exercise that ensures the involvement of all the players of tourism, for example the stakeholders and the affected departments. The purpose is to scrutinize all economic, social and environmental costs and benefits in order to determine the most appropriate option and to plan a suitable course of action. The planning of tourism, whether at the national or regional level, must be regarded as an integral and therefore coordinated part of the country's general economic and social planning. It helps in streamlining the various impacts of the development and resource limitations or in other words helps in conducting the feasibility study of the tourism market. Further, it helps in an area, region, nation by giving a stability and expectedness in the progress of the overall development of tourism in a given area. Thank you.